saints of the Most High, Yah. Hallelujah. 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 Here we are again on third day. Scripture study. Hope all is well with everyone. Here we are another day in the war. Another day closer to coming home. Hallelujah. Oh, praise Yah. Uh, Brother Shane here tonight. The Edomite, no. Those in Israel know better than that, don't they? Con considering <laughs> the melee that's been going on lately by a bunch of fools. We might talk about that a little bit though, about that tonight. Hallelujah. I pray all is well with the saints of the Most High Yah. With the family of Yah. We got a lot to be thankful for, especially family. I'm thankful for family, especially in this time and this hour when the family is being attacked. One of the many images of the Most High Yah. You know, it's Hasatan. He's attacking every facet, every image of the Most High Yah that he can tear down, destroy, corrupt, whatever he can do. And here we are with the privilege to uphold the banner of his being. Hallelujah. Ah, bless Heavenly Father and wonderful name Yeshua. We thank you again for another night. You've given us strength in our bodies. All faculties in place, and we're thankful for that. We're gathered here tonight. And humbly ask you most high for your strength, for your word, for your anointing, leading and guiding through your word tonight. Pray, as always, most high. Give Pastor Dow, Sister Carol, some good rest that they need tonight. They deal with the things they have to deal with days ahead. Thank you, Most High, to be in the ministry, all of us as servants of Yah. Humbly ask your blessing upon this scripture study tonight in the blessed name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all may be seated. Saints of the Most High, I was kind of thin tonight. Wow. But praise Yah. All things work together for good. You know, that's a, that's a good thing to have in our hearts and our minds, you know. It's, it seems like sometimes, you know, circumstances and situations want to, you know, fight that. But, you know, that's a good thing, you know, to have in your heart, you know, as frontless before your eyes when you're in these situations that say they, these things work together for good. To them that are the called according to his purpose. And it's always his purpose. And I thank the Most High Yah for that. And I know each and every one of us do standing here. Brother Shane, you walk around a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I just get uh, excited. I'm excited. So a lot of the times that's the reason why I move a lot. <laughs> but, you know, we as Hebrews, calling yourself a Hebrew, look at the color of your skin. Hmm. That seems to be a. I think it's uh, bannered up in this time we're in, huh? Sad, though. Very sad. These people say that they love Yah. And they can't love the, the brother or the sister that's right in front of their face. You know what the Word says that they are? Liars. Liars. Question, for what is your life? What is my life? You know, it's, it's something that here we are in this, this world, this existence, trying to find out what life is. It, it, it's, it's, it's a unique journey, ain't it? Because many of us, we have been on the other side of life. Say that we were obtaining life, huh? But until the Most High Yah come and took that life, took the you know that kingdom and uh, and brought it to desolation, and now He's given us a privilege to enter into life. But we thought we had life at one time, huh? Then the question is, for what is your life? What is it according to the Word, according to the 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 eyes of Yahweh, according to His heart? What is your life? It is even a vapor. And you know, I can look at that and, and sit down and, and just 
give obeisance and say of the truth the most high God, it is a vapor it just seemed like you know way time has you know just passed five minutes ago I was a teenager you know you really look how things have just rushed by us that we you know especially in this temple realm we you know we, we these these memories and these times they just like sand falling through our hands they, they really can't grasp onto them huh and we can really understand that word vapor because you know you know as we get more mature and go on and you get closer to coming home you know Shabbat after Shabbat feast after feast is almost on top of each other before we blink an eye and that gives us an understanding that it is even a vapor but those you know that are living you know this temporal walk do they understand this very very understanding and this very wisdom that the Most High is telling us is he condemning us in this as this, what is your life? It is even a vapor. No, it's just the truth. It's just the truth. Plain truth. It said, It appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. And we see a lot of people in this world just grasping and clutching the earth, trying to, you know, just have a little bit more time on this ball of dirt. Why well, is the people, y'all, we're ready to get the hell out of here. I mean, you know, we're hauling this. Hey, this is not our home. We, we, we want to get home. We look upon the horizon, upon the vertical, and we go on, this world is not my home. I'm glad I am a stranger and a pilgrim because, you know, as we learn more of him, the more strange the things of this world come to how strange we become to them. And that's probably why I'm so strange because I call myself an Israelite in a white skinned body. Oh, I'm strange. But even this is vanishing away. Why would I have any credence in this earthen vessel? As a saint of the Most High. How many of us calling ourselves saints, Hebrews of the Most High, would have any credence in an earthen vessel? than to just have the privilege and the ability to have it broke. And this earthen vessel's got to be broke to see what's on the inside. But many people are out there resisting the breaking. So what is your life? It appears for a little time. And many people out there, I've got to have more time, more time, more time. And then it what? Vanishes away. I gotta make myself a name. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit tonight about the curse of the past. This is something you know I see riddling Israel quite a bit on different levels. I even see you know a lot of what's going on in this world they're basing a lot of hostility a lot of bitterness a lot of anger a lot of hatred on things in the past things that are behind and we're going to call this life we're going to clamber for this life the curse of the past yeah it is a curse as many, every one of us in here have a past. And there's a lot of things that's happened in our past that's not good. I mean, they're, they're not pleasant. They're not something, you know, to put on a trophy, to put a poster on the wall, or to have up in neon lights. And that's when we supposedly we were in life. Then vanishing moments. I mean, what good is it to hold on to hand, sand in the hands? Why don't people just grasp the rock? Instead of getting handfuls of sand. 
And that's why I look at the past. What does it actually bearing have for a believer in this time and this hour? What is it about this past? When we bring up the past, we are giving it power over the what? The now. What? It has that much power? And we can see venues of this world, how much a lot of things that's happened in the past. I mean, if we really want to be vengeful, which the Most High Eye says vengeance is His, but we see a lot of people want to take vengeance upon themselves. Because our people have been in Egyptian captivity, Babylonian captivity, Medes and Persian captivity, Greek captivity, Roman captivity. If, hey, if we're going to be balanced and not have a false balance home, let's go after the Egyptians, let's go after the Babylonians, let's go after the Medes and Persians, go after the Greeks, come on! We're going to do it right. We're going to roll all our wrath and all our bitterness and all our grief of things in the past, the vanishing things. How many of us ever reach back in the past and bring it in the present? When we bring up the past, we are giving it power over what? The now. The past is an experience people look through. What's that mean? The memories and the suffering and the pain and the hurt is just so there. It's so reality to people. That's what they filter everything through. Doctrine, feelings, emotions, interactions, conversations, relationships. If somebody is hung in this past, Experience, they look through everything of that filter. For some, the past is a cancerous limb attached to their soul, mind, will, and emotion. What did it do? That spreads to many aspects of the what? And I see this in a lot of believers. On this hand. And that happened. And I'm this way because of this. And I'm this way because of that. Well, mama had this and great mom, grandmama had that. And we wonder why Israel's sick and, 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 and full of putrefying sores and mangled. Because it's one thing to carry around these cancerous limbs of the past. People who live in the past live inside a cage. Well, you know, I don't live in a cage. But so many years ago this happened. So I've got to have vengeance on that happened that many years ago. People who live in the past live inside a what? A cage. And the presence of what? Free people makes their cage painfully visible. Why do you think people just can't mingle? People can't have fellowship with those that are free. See, so they look in many aspects of straightway is, you know, people that are desiring to be set free. While yet, while through the bars of their cage, they're railing, they're running, they're cut back and forth, and they're th threatening slaughterings and, and murderings and foaming out their own shame. Why? Because the free people is making this cage painfully visible. We gotta hide it. We gotta hide it. We gotta hide it. Wonder why people lash out. Wonder why people are so vindictive. Why this is just raw. It's 
basically in the realm of a free people. And Israel is a free people or should be a free people. We are liberated. In the word we heard the Spirit saying, come out of her, come out of her, come out of her. Some people love their cage. Those severely enmeshed with the past will keep retelling the same old story and in doing so, they keep reliving that story over and over and over and over again. Why so many people in Israel ain't getting the victory? Why people of Israel ain't realizing that they are free? Even though we're in these earthen vessels and they have different tones, different colors, different hues, it's still, you know, whatever hue, whatever color it comes from, it still comes from the earth. It all had one place of beginning. These temporal tabernacles. And here we are, the temple of Yah. Israel, the temple of Yah. And we look back at the tabernacle that was in the wilderness. How, how many colors of coats of skin was upon that tabernacle? In layers. If we really want to look at it for what it's worth, what is the Most High Eye telling us? Are we going to live in our cages? Are we going to continually walk around with our ball and chains and then rattle them at the those that are free? Beckoning them back to your cage? That's why you see this stuff keep rehashing and rehashing and rehashing itself over and over and over. Because those that are they're, they're enslaved in the condemnation, they, they, they don't have no solace, they don't have no, no peace without dragging someone else there with them. Why do you think the Hasatan you know, is doing what he's doing? Same old story, same old dance, same old lie. So the past destroys people slowly by sabotaging their relationships because as people peer through the past, it causes them to make assumptions about people and situations. If we really want to take the veil off of some, let us take the veil off of this. that Hasatan knows his future and that Hasatan is still living in the past like one brother eloquently said you know it's amazing we take all this energy and all this effort to fight one another when we should be taking the same energy and the same effort and, 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 and then doing what we should be doing as Hebrew Israelites fighting the true enemy the Hasatan the God of this world but no, we want our cage. And we want the Hasatan in our cage. We want him to run around with his keys when he don't have no keys. We, in, we have not we believe the report that, that, that Yeshua went down and got them keys from him. The past destroys people slowly by sabotaging their relationships because as people peer through the past, it causes them to make assumptions Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. They're going to desire to scandalize one another. Why, a curse of the past? This small thing? Simple thing? And each and every one of us, in our mind's eye, we have 
been touched by it. We have lived in it. We have fellowshiped with it. That we are without excuse. When the love of Yah, as we're going to see as we go on, tells us totally different. Look at the old man. How many of us remember our old man? Not a good memory, huh? Not a good memory. Luke 5.36 It is said, And he, also, he spake, Yeshua, also a parable unto them. It says, no man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. Hmm. wonder what he's really talking about. Do you think he's talking about clothes here? you think he's talking about clothes here, Elder? And he's a garment, though. It's a garment. Uh, ain't that a temporal thing, garment? Why, why would Yeshua talk about a temporal thing there? What, what, what is he really speaking to? Who do you think he's really speaking to? And he spake also a parable unto them, No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. Wife, if otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent. I mean, it, 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 it can't coincide, huh? They say, this thing can't be. And the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. What is he talking about? Hmm. Look at that. Romans chapter 6. Starting at verse 1. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Yah forbid. How shall we? I wonder who the we are. You can answer that for yourself that are dead to sin, live, where's that word live? Any longer therein, living in what? Sin. 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 Verse 3, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him, how? By baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk, how? In newness of life. What life? What life? What life? What life? What life? What life is he talking about? What life? Is it my life? My life? My life? I think he's talking about another life within us. For, verse 5, if we have been planted together, whoa, we're plant, be planted now, huh? Why is, a, why is most high talk like that? Why does Yeshua talk to his people like that? Do, how many of us really hear what he's saying? How many of us really hear what he's saying? For if we have been planted together, we have been planted together. You know what? I can say me and Christ. We've been planted together. We have. We have. Is that what the Word says? Is that what the Word is uh, proclaiming? Well, that's edifying, huh? That's edifying, huh? And now if I had a pocket of Esau buttons and start passing them out, would that edify y'all as well? 
would it? Huh? What if I knew something about your past and wrote a book on it and started publishing it? Would that be all right? Why? For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, what? That our what? Hmm. That old man in the here and now? How many of us can say our old man's right here? How many have said an old man sitting in this chair right now? In these chairs? How many old, 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 old men? How many of your former life you're here with it now? I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. What, what? Is this something to know? Huh? All right, I do. I need to know who Edom is. But knowing this, what? What is the this? What is the this we got to know? What's the this we got to know, saints? That uh, what? Old man is crucified and what? Oh, no, not old heavy metal rocker, brother Shane. No, not in the bang of head, brother Shane. No, no, I wasn't brother then. Oh. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with who? Hmm. Amazing. I just wonder what he put up on that tree. What the heck he put up on that tree? What color was it that he put up on that tree? What flesh was that color he put up on that tree? Did it matter? Did it matter? I mean, what was that his purpose? What was it, what was it? That was his purpose, huh? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified, impaled with him, why that the... So what is it calling the old man? So how many people we see still out here threatening and slaughtering and, and foaming out their shame because they are in a... Have they come to this point of the crucifixion? Have they come to the point of this impalement? To the understanding of what was put on the tree and taken out of the way? Yet we take something that was put on the tree, bring it out from under the blood, and crucify it again afresh. Knowing this, that uh, That's a definite, huh? I wonder who's in the club of the hour. Who's in the family of the hour. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified. And what? Why? The thing I learned about crucifying and impalement, it was, it was a death. Something died. It is crucified with him. Oh, why we got to go with this? It's simple though, but it's so great. That people that are calling, oh, we love Yahweh, we love His Son. But they don't know who their brother and sister is. They cannot discern Yeshua's body. And they're going to take the Passover, huh? How many is going to take the Passover in a... And we see many take... The Passover and the body of sin and they are no longer with us. No 
on this that old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed. I mean, it's going to that point of destruction. That's what most high wants of our past, of our former behavior. Wants it what? Destroyed? For what purpose? That henceforth we should not serve what? Sin. Old man, body of sin. Old man equals body of sin. Ephesians 4. 22 through 25. It tells us that ye, there's that word again, a definite ye, you, 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 you. Ye being plural. A whole bunch of yous in here. <coughs> that you, ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. How is it corrupt? Deceitful lust. And be renewed in where? Spirit of your mind. But if I'm living in the past then what has my mind caged? What has my mind imprisoned? Am I free? Be renewed in the spirit, spirit, spirit of where? Your mind. And that you put on the new man. It's always telling us, put it on, put it on, put on the new man. We have to remind ourselves day by day we are new, we are new, we are new, we are new. Every day is a new day. As we're coming upon a new day. Our hope is in a new day, a new kingdom, a new earth. But no, we don't want no fellowship of the new. We don't want to drink the cup of the new. We don't want to break bread of the new. No. We don't want to let go none of, of our cages. I got to have my cage. I've had this all my life and it's the only comfort I know. See the shackling? And the word is telling us simply do this. Where? I believe the word and then start doing it. Saints of the Most High, if you're plagued with the past, if the past is a curse to you, then there is a way out. He was tempted at all points as we are, yet without sin. That you put on the new man, which after Yah is created. It's created. The new man's created. We've been created new. I've still got my, I still look at the same skin tone I looked at when I was five years old. And so I, I looked this way when I was 15. I'm in the still the same body. You put on the new man, which after your eyes created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth. And we do we see a lot of people that are claiming themselves to be the most high uh, speaking truth with his neighbor? A lot of people, just because of my shade of my tabernacle they won't be able to receive from me tonight and in doing so you ain't receiving from Yeshua cut plain dry and simple and if you do this to the least of any one of us you've done it unto him do you believe the report do you believe the report I've seen fruits of many who do not believe but they confess, I love y'all like hell. You're liars.
Wherefore put him away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbors, for we are members one of another. 2 Corinthians 5.16 Wherefore henceforth we, there's that word, we, 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 that's a definite, that's a definite, that's a definite. We can liken we to Israel. Yah's people, Yah's children. We, we, that is the, the body of the we. Wherefore henceforth no we, no man, how? Now we see how a lot of people know us after. What do you think the heathens do? Just look at the political realm. I mean, just use this for an example. When, you know, it's time for the votes to come in and everything, and there's close contingency between all the candidates, they got to go back in people's past and pull up crap just so that they might gain the more votes, so they might sway the vote. What do you think the Hasidon did in the heavenlies when he took a third of the heavenly host? We wonder what he was doing. Hmm. No new thing under the sun, but we won't see it at this light. No, we won't, we won't take the time to let Yeshua with, come with the keys and unlock the prison and the cage we are in that hopefully then we would walk out of the prison and walk out into the light of the sun that we may see. And this may be a key to some of y'all tonight to get out of your damn cages. I see a lot of people caged in Israel, but we're talking captivity, 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 and don't know the damn captivity you're still in. Wherefore, henceforth, no, we know man after, after those that are in Yeshua, those that are in Yah. Those that are in righteousness and truth and holiness, we know no man after the flesh. Hardest thing in Israel for us to get to. Because he goes on even further. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, and we read through Matthew, through John, we, 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 we received the report while he was yet here in the body that was prepared for him. And here we are even now, the body that was prepared for him. We know he come in the flesh, but he did something with that flesh. It was put on a tree, paled, destroyed, a body of sin. So a body of sin will know someone after the because that's all they know. That's all they will see through. See the vision? See how those living in the past and pulling everything from the past will walk and talk and eat and breathe and drink their daily lives? Yeah, though we have known who? After the flesh. Yet where? Where? Now, what, 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 but what will, what will oversee the now? The past. Yet now, henceforth, yet now, henceforth, from this point of understanding this, from this point of receiving this revelation, from this town, time now onward, henceforth know we him no more. Amazing, the book of Hebrews starts out as though, you know, we've been spoken in times past unto the fathers, sundry times by the prophets. Now he speaks unto his, us by his son. But we don't know him after the flesh because we know him no more. Why? He put something on the tree, didn't he? And who was there on that tree with him? 
If you would just humble yourself. And prostrate yourself to this simple truth. You might hear locks open. That simple? Well, no, I gotta give me a stack of books. When the volume of the book it is written of him. We gotta have more books to understand the book. Therefore, if any man be where? In Christ. Oh, I'm a Hebrew. I'm an Israelite. Now, if you're in Christ, if he's in him, you gotta be in. You got to be in. You gotta be on the in crowd. He is a new. Well, new creatures in here today, aren't we? How many of us reckon ourselves new daily? Ain't this good things to think on? Things that are honest and of good report and of truth. Things you know that that ain't like sand falling through your hand. When all of a sudden they become like a rock under your feet. All of a sudden you, you find yourself on the high places like with hind's feet. You, you might find yourself soaring with eagle's wings on high. Because an eagle can't soar up on high if he's caged. Heights, feet, and high places ain't going to get there if they're caged. But I read it. And oh, it's so beautiful. That's life. That's life. If you won't really understand it, baptize yourself in it. Live it. Eat it. Drink it. Not the damn cage. You got three squares in a cot in that cage. Hey, well, I don't know what the hell they feeding me while I'm in the cage. Old things, old things are passed away. What? Everything that has happened is... Where's the bearing of it? Why should I... I can't find no past. Y'all can y'all see my past anywhere? I need a piece of my past. I, I think I laid some over here. No. I don't look like I can find any of it, man. I guess it passed away, huh? Why would I want to go pick it up again? Days of my suffering and my sorrow and my hurt and my disgust. Do I want to live that again or do I want joy and peace and long suffering and deep meekness and temperance? Do I want the treasures of Yah? Do I want to eat at his table? Or do I want to stay in the, in the cage and get my three squares in a cot? things are passed away, behold all. Yeah, I do like pastor. Oh, i got to wipe my eyes. I don't know if I read that right. How many? All things are... How many when we wake up in the morning everything is new? Oh, we wake up, well, I went to bed like this. And, you know, I had a fight with so-and-so, then why'd you let the sun go down on your wrath? Now here you are living in the past by something you didn't take before sundown. And you're caged. And now all your present living and all your present sight is in the past. Chained. 
Because they didn't get it right with my brother. Didn't get it right with my sister. They said this about me. And they said that about me. And I'm going around all day my chains in my cage where everybody can see it. I don't want to see nobody's past. If I know how deplorable and how nasty and how disgusting my past was, do you think I want to know yours? And if I say I love you and you're my brother and my sister, why would I use this as a weapon against you? When I know in myself, the Hasatan will love to bring all things of my past up and throw it continually before me. And he does that with vigor. Vigor! Because we didn't start the day off with a new mind. Wake up with an old man. All things are become new. And it says in Hebrews 10, 38, Now! There's that word. <laughs> I mean, it's putting it in perspective. I mean, the straightforward. Now the just shall live by faith. But it says, But if any man draw what? Back! Woo-wee. Drawing back? What does that mean? Going back? Man, the more I look at this, this is a forward march. This is a forward engagement. But he says, But if any man draw back, Most High said, My soul shall have no pleasure in him. We wonder why we have no joy. We have no pleasure. When the the joy of Yeshua shall be our strength. And when we walk in truth, then He knows He has no greater joy than to hear that His children walk in truth. And and because He's having that greater joy, then we receive the pleasure of walking in truth. That's why His soul has no pleasure in us anytime when we draw back. Word tells us eyes forward. Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, we all have put our hand to the plow. Old, old, old gospel song. Keep your hand on that plow and hold on. Hold on. Sometimes plowing is, is a tough job. I mean, many of us have looked down there in the garden. There's rocks and there's all kinds of hard earth and everything. You know, that's the way we are. Sometimes plowing ourselves, that is a hell of a task. Hell of a task. But he says, and Yeshua said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, I never seen nobody plowing a field, plowing it this way. No, if he's gonna pay, if he's gonna do that thing straight, he's gonna have his eyes straight forward, and he's gonna be watching. Having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of Yah. Is he worthy for the kingdom of Yah? If he don't endure keeping his hand on the plow, because that's some that's some work. That's some labor. This looking back. And any time we look back brings us a realm of condemnation. We wonder why every time that we relive our past and look back that we enter into these great distresses and and, and baptisms of, I guess, condemnation. We get immersed in it. Every time we know we, 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 we look back We've entered into this type and realm of condemnation. And we wonder why 
the people foam out their shame because they are in a realm of condemnation because of looking back, looking back. And this is not our heritage. This is not our heritage. Philippians says, I press toward how? Toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Yah in Christ Jesus. How do I press? You ever anybody see anybody try to press backwards? I think you get more pressing when you go forwards, don't you? More strength, huh? Seem like, you know, even these old temporal bodies, they have more strength pulling forward than they do trying to push something backwards. But I press toward the mark for the prize. What am I pressing toward? Of the high calling. If I'm caged, how can I be called up high? Said, while we look not, we, 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 saints of the Most High, children of Yah, while we look not at the things which are seen, and we see so many people how they look, because the fruits of their lips do signify it. YouTube is full of it. Facebook is full of it. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. So I see something on me that is temporal. So if this is temporal, and, I, and I'm a Hebrew and I'm an Israelite, what bearing has this in my life now? If I can break beyond this veil, as Yeshua said, when that body was up on that tree, when he said... It is finished when that body died. Then the veil of the temple was rent. Wonder what that veil was. Wonder what that veil was. Wonder what that veil was. Yeah, we see a lot of people contending after each other's veils. Because these things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are... The new creature always sees the eternal. That's the way he was fashioned. That's the way he was birthed. That's the way he was created. Remember Lot's wife? Luke 17 real quick. And that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not re what? Return. Go back. Go back. What is the command? Eyes forward. Remember Lot's wife? Remember the time when we lived in Sodom and Gomorrah? Serving our diverse lust and our pleasures and our sins? And the word tells us, remember Lot's wife? What happened? What's, what's going on with Lot's wife? Her heart was somewhere in the back behind her, huh? As they were fleeing forward. And here we are going forward. And it tells us you got your hand on the plow not to do what? Remember Lot's wife. Also tells us eyes up. It says set your affections on things above, not on things of what? KJV. Scripture says this. Mind the matters where? Where at? Your affections is your 
Mind the matters above. We see so many hours of Israel. And we've got to take care of things down here on this earth. If we keep our mind on the matters above, the things down here will be taken care of. Not on things, not those on the earth. Why looking unto Jesus? Oh, that's a pagan name. <sighs> looking unto Yeshua. Is that a better? Looking unto Yeshua, the author and finisher of what? Our. Our. He's the what? Our. Author. And he begun it. And he will, of our faith, the new creature, right? Why did he do this? Who for the joy? It was a joy. It was a joy. That was said before him endured the... It was a joy? It didn't look like a joy, did it? All that pain, all that suffering. Who for the joy that was set before him? I mean, there was something beyond that flesh, huh? That he pressed and he persevered and he pushed through that veil to put it up upon a tree. Whereas any normal man, amen, at the first scourging would be dead already. Who for the joy, Yeshua, it was joy to him? To put that body on a tree? The body of sin? The same thing that we continually fight. And that's one thing we definitely got to put behind. Who for the joy that was sent before? <laughs> <coughs> Even Yeshua himself had his eyes forward and his eyes upward. Should we not arm ourselves likewise with the same mind, setting our affection, our mind on matters above? Who for the joy that was set before? He wasn't thinking about nothing in the past. He saw something that was going to be in the future. That's the reason why you're sitting in these chairs. There's a reason why you're able to hear it and receive the word of Yah. And to hear the word of Yah. We don't liken it as some temporal trees when he's talking about trees. We ain't got an oak tree or a maple tree or nothing like that in our mind. See what I'm saying? See the reason why he talks to us and how he talks to his children? Whereas the world will see a temporal tree, whereas we will see it's us ourselves. Whereas he's talking about a garment. He's talking about the old man and the new man. Who for the joy that was set where? Before him endured. That was a joy before. That was a joy. He wanted to get to that joy. For us, for you, for me. Will we have that fellowship one day? Will we? Will we? Or will we badger one another because of, because of the color of the tabernacles? When Yah has put, torn that wall of perdition down. Who for the joy that was set before Him endured the tree despising every bit of that shame. And because he did it, he sat down at the right hand of the throne of Yah. He sat down in power. As we have. Warning. Second Peter 2. Twenty through twenty-two says, 
For if they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through is how we escape the pollutions of the world that was in our past. How we do this? Through the knowledge of our Master and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then that they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse than them than the beginning. And they said, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from what? The holy commandment delivered unto them. And it said, but it happened to them according to the proverb. Notice the, this proverb. What state of time it is set in. But it's happened unto them according to the proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. Turning back. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Solutions. We are the saints of the Most High Yah, with the mind of His Son, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. This is our resolve that we should have in each and every one of us day by day from this time henceforth. And we should work on this. For I resolve not to know any matter among you except Yeshua Messiah and Him impaled. That's why I ask a lot of y'all out there, they all having problems. Do you know Messiah and Him impaled? And what was impaled? What was crucified? What was killed? Because if you did, you wouldn't be acting the way you're doing. Says, be not conformed to this world. But how? Be not what? There's everything in this time and this hour. I mean it, I mean it's at break stand speed trying to get us to be I mean to the image. I mean, there's so many images out there. And and it's not statues anymore. It's not statues anymore. It, it goes beyond even symbols now. Any one of us, we know, I, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, one of the biggest you know, things being erected in this hour is the God of self. God of pleasure. Vanity. And I can go, list can go on and on and on. Because these things are there to draw people back. 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 You know, when people fall, fall away, they fall. Be not conformed. I think there's a word called metamorpho or something like that in the Greek. Metamorphosis, you know, that's what a, what a, a caterpillar does. You know, it lives so long as a caterpillar, then it changes its shape. You know, just as we are, you know, one time we was in a state same manner but you know after we come into the knowledge of Yeshua HaMashiach and we're born again became new creatures we went from we went from an earth bound creature to one that had wings you know what I'm saying I'm talking about you know I'm not talking literally wings I'm talking about the freedom and the liberty wherever we were able to mount up as wings as eagles that's why we can understand that act. We can understand that function. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. It's always a forming, forming, forming. Creation is always a forming. Because we, the Creator is in us and the Creator is in Him. I mean, we must really understand that. The one that created all things is in us and we in Him. If anybody in this whole world should be of any creative ability above anybody, it should be us. No wonder they attack the free. 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Praise Yah, saints. Most high Yah. Burden on my heart for quite a while. As you know, part of me don't want to be up here ministering, but I've got to, you know, not look back. <laughs> I've got to continue to look forward. And if I'm going to love my brothers and sisters, if the Most High Eye has created me a vessel in this manner, I must do as He has created me. And that's the same for every one of you. It is. It is. We are builders. We are planters. We're not, we're not here to steal, kill, and destroy. As we have seen some very, very recently trying to do. They can keep rattling their cages. I think the most high I can... I can mount up wings as eagles and fly above it all. Whereas, you know, the things of the earth, you know, you know how they get dim, the higher you get, you know, the smaller the things of the earth become, yeah. That's what I think the most high out for prayer. Can break away from this earth at any time. <laughs> yes. Bow the knee, you know, and prostrate myself and just check out this world. That's a privilege, that's an honor. Hallelujah. That I can start learning my brothers and sisters after the Spirit. And we think, you know, after their Spirit. No, the Spirit is Yeshua HaMashiach. That is the Spirit that is in us. And that's the way we need to start viewing each other. We do. Praise Yah. Ah, oh, bless Heavenly Father, in wonderful name of Yeshua. Thank you again, Most High. For allowing us to have fellowship with you again this night and every day because we need it most high. We've got to get home. We've got to get home. The world is growing grossly dark. I mean, the ignorance is abounding. I mean, just deep ignorance. And you're leading and guiding us by your word through this, most high. Help us make it home. And we will thank you for it in the days coming. And we'll be continually have an attitude of gratitude on our heart. We will wake up in the morning saying, without you I can do nothing. We'll have words of praise, adoration. Set forth the day in this manner most high because we are new creatures. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. This we bless you and praise you and glorify and thank you in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you all, saints. King is coming.